Robert Sala just finished his press conference at the owners' meeting down in Florida. What did he say? Inside, and Beauty, Paul running free. Free Sala inside the 10. He's going to score. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Talking Jets with Tigo. My name is Tigo, and that is absolutely right. You heard me right. The New York Jets head coach, Robert Sala, has just finished his press conference with the media and all available personnel and all of that stuff at the owners' meeting. He said a lot of things, and we're going to go over the biggest talking points of what he said, but also we're, he kind of gave us a lot of coaches talk, you know, coach speak and dodging questions and not answering questions. I'm going to try to dissect the things that he said into what I think is actually being said and what is being portrayed and react to those things. So let's hop right into it. So the first thing, and this is where we're going to start because this is what everyone's probably curious about. He didn't talk about Aaron Rodgers. He said any Aaron Rodgers, I can't talk about a player that's not on my team and any Aaron Rodgers trade talk, I'm going to defer to Joe Douglas he doesn't want to hit the panic button yet. When it happens, it happens. And that's all we really got from the entire press conference. He didn't really talk about Aaron Rodgers specifically. But as we go on a little bit, you're going to see that he does talk about the presence a veteran quarterback does bring to the system. So he didn't talk trade at all. He didn't talk about the communications with Zach and what the plan for Zach is moving forward. He, he used that same talking point that he did before about Zach Wilson has a place in the NFL. Um, he's got sky-high talent. He believes in Zach and wants to keep him around for the team. Uh, makes a ton of sense. Mentioned that Zach Wilson is quarterback too as of right now. Um, I think they mean that. Going out and adding a, a second quarterback... Uh, to back up Aaron Rodgers just doesn't make a ton of sense in my eyes. Aaron Rodgers doesn't miss time. He's one of the healthier quarterbacks in the NFL. Also, Nathaniel Hackett's coaching system would actually really, really help um, Zach Wilson. And don't forget that like Zach won like five games last year in spite of him trying to do everything he can to lose games. And that was before everyone went down with injury. Spending more money in a, in a quarterback room... That's relatively going to be expensive. We're paying Zach $10 million. I'm assuming we're going to restructure Aaron Rodgers' contract when he gets here, and he's going to probably be closer to that 30 number. When we have other holes in the roster, it just doesn't make a ton of sense. And, like, to be fair, in the comments, let me know what backup quarterback is out there that you feel comfortable is going to do anything better than Zach when it comes to, like, keeping the ship afloat, like specifically in a Nathaniel Hackett system, like Carson Wentz isn't that much better and is going to be expensive. And all of these other guys have massive question marks around them too. Like I'm not worried of Aaron Rodgers going down with an injury because he just doesn't go down with injury. And then if we have to play Zach for like a week or two, I'm not that worried. Nathaniel Hackett is actually a good offensive coordinator that adjusts his scheme and his play calling for the talent that he has at quarterback. He did mention a uh, talk about the wide receiver room. Uh, when asked about uh, Odell Beckham Jr., he mentioned, we're always interested in adding good and talented players to the football team. And that's kind of where he left it at. Um, didn't really take a deep dive into the player or anything like that. Just mentioned OBJ is good, that there's mutual interest there. And that's really it. Then we talk about, he continues talking about the wide receiver room when he was asked about Corey Davis and said, you know what, the New York Jets would like to keep Corey Davis around. That's the plan as of right now. And then when talking about McCall Hardman and specifically asked about McCall Hardman and what does he bring to the team, his answer was straight up just gas. And he's right. McCall Hardman is an Olympic sprinter, essentially. And he did bring up the yards after the catch uh, being uh number two in the league, only behind Debo Samuel and all of those things and his talent. But one of the things that he did mention, not just about McCole Harmon, but about all of the young wide receivers and he considered and put McCole Harmon in this young wide receiver class, 
is that he believes that adding veterans to the wide receiver room like an Alan Lazard, he put McCall Hardman in this as well when he was talking specifically about Garrett Wilson and Denzel Mims because he named both of these two guys, said that adding a, a veteran wide receivers and a veteran QB will only help these young wide receivers. And that specifically with McCall Hardman, they really want to work on his intermediate route running. They still believe that there is a ton to pull out of this player, not just his over-the-top game-breaking speed. They want to be able to develop his intermediate route running ability. And that's absolutely a great thing. If our wide receivers coach can really go in and help develop that speed, uh, not the speed, but his route running ability, McCole Hardman, I think, has a place in this NFL if he can add a really deep route tree under his belt. Um, because you just don't, you can't teach that speed. So there's that. Now moving over to the offensive side of the ball uh, and the offensive line specifically, not moving over because I was going to go talk about Chuck Clark, but I'll do that after the offensive line. But when we were talking about the offensive line, he talked specifically about like three players. Uh, when he was asked about Makai Becton, he said that Makai Becton looked healthy, looked fit, and they still believe in the young man. Um, the same talking points that we've heard about Makai Becton the whole time. I got this sense that like, before it was just kind of coaches speak, and this time I kind of believed him a little bit more. I don't know if that's just me really, like, I like Makai Becton and I want him to work out. Um, but I think the real telling thing is that they're moving Elijah Vera Tucker back to right guard. They believe that Elijah Vera Tucker is a Pro Bowl guard when healthy and that that's the plan is to play him at right guard again. And they also mentioned that they showed interest in um, Ben Jones and that there is mutual interest there and that those things need to happen. So... A very interesting point there. I think the real thing that I took away from this is, yes, they believe in Makai Becton, but they don't trust Makai Becton to stay healthy. So it really kind of solidified tackle at 13 probably um, or tackle in the second round if we don't go 13 or if we trade back, whatever. Like tackle in the first round is probably where the team is going to go. Um Elijah Vera Tucker moving back inside to guard really kind of solidified that to me. Because if you were going to have Elijah Vera Tucker compete for the tackle spot, you could probably delay the tackle position. And then uh, when he talked about interest in Ben Jones, it came off more as a like, of, like, of course, we're interested in a good player kind of a conversation. I don't know if anything is going to materialize there. Um, to be honest, I think the plan is, hey, we're talking to all of these centers and we're going to wait till the draft. And I think a lot of teams are doing this. They're just going to wait till the draft and see what happens. Because if they don't get one of the centers in the draft, okay, go get Ben Jones, go get Connor McGovern, go get one of these guys. But if you feel like you can get a center in the draft, there's no point in signing a guy now, especially with the rumors coming out that the Ben Jones conversation was on a multi-year deal. Now, I don't know if that multi-year deal was like a bunch of void years to help with the contract or anything like that. But that is the conversation that was being had. And now let's move over to the, uh, oh, one more thing. And I think this can put the Ezekiel Elliott to the Jets rumors to bed. Um, when asked about his the running back room, he was asked twice, once in the middle of the interview and once at the end. And both times he looked the person dead in the face and with a straight face and said, we like our running back room. I think the Ezekiel Elliott interest was more him interested in coming to the New York Jets, not the New York Jets interested in him. This makes a ton of sense for the New York Jets not to be super all in on a guy like, you know, Ezekiel Elliott. I'm not trying to dog him as a player or that he's a bad player or that he's a great player or anything like that. He's fine. But that being said, when you look at the guy and his ability, it's there. The Jets just aren't interested in it. Um, and now moving over to the defensive side of the ball, he talked about two players and specifically when it came to the defensive side of the ball that I took interest in. He mentioned Calais Campbell and that there's interest there and that the defensive line and the defensive tackle room is great and that we have Quinn and Williams and that he's still an awesome player. So there's that. Uh, I do expect us to be active in the defensive tackle room and the defensive tackle situation moving forward with the draft. Totally believe that. Now, the other thing that, I think was mentioned and was a little bit interesting was specifically when he was talking about Carl Lawson. When asked about Carl Lawson, he said, as long as he can play, he's he's got a place on my team. And I think that that was really, really telling. I don't think Carl Lawson is going anywhere. Uh, the mention of you don't grow pass rushers on trees and his skill set is something that absolutely 
is out there like that, that like you need for a pass rushing set. I don't think Carl Lawson is going anywhere. If anything, I wouldn't even be surprised if he got an extension midway through the season or like even now to maybe try to lower his cap number. Um, it makes a ton of sense. Carl Lawson's ability and the rotation that we use on the edge and the defensive end room is a big part of how this team creates pressure. And the fact that we already lost two guys on the interior of the defensive line that we need to replace, don't add another piece to lose on the edge. Doesn't make sense. And then when talking about Chuck Clark said, you know, Chuck Clark is great, great tackler, great locker room presence, great player. More coaches speak about um, Chuck Clark. But those were the big things that I took away from the Robert Sala press conference. Guys, let me know in the comment section, what did you take away from the Robert Sala press conference? Was there anything, any nugget, any piece of information that you think I missed? Let me know in the comment section below. And last but not least, go Jets.